request that everyone keep their uh, mics muted unless we are speaking or asking a question because this is a full house and we, you know, we have a lot of background noises. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Miss Jamie and we're going to get started. Okay, so I'm going to do her bio. She's just waving. All right, Miss Jamie Liggins is the founder and CEO of Notary S. S oh, I forgot. What is it, Miss Jamie? Notary, Notary SS. Access. Access. Okay. And business services. She has 28 plus years of experience in the notary industry. Her roles are vast and extend beyond the notary notary industry as instructor, mentor, certified NSA, but also as a public speaker, field inspector, and author. In 2004, she was particularly recognized by the National Notary Association, not only for her dedication to the notary industry development of a personalized one-on-one -on -one training program, but also for her notary mentoring program. In 2018, she was also honored as the 2018 NNA Conference keynote speaker and has been a regular NNA Conference presenter. So welcome, Miss Jamie. We are so happy to have you. Take it away. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here, too. And I'm happy to hear that. Jay, before you take it away, could I just say something? Uh, not going to stop you. <laughs> hey, I met Jamie. Well, I, I don't know if I actually met her, but I heard Jamie speak at the first um, uh, National Notary Association conference that I attended, which was here in Dallas. Go ahead, I muted them. Uh, okay, and I met her and she was one of the absolute best speakers for that entire conference. So Thank I am so happy that we have been able to reconnect since then. Jamie, I just wanted to throw that in. Now you go ahead, girl. Do well, you I'm gonna go ahead in that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, wow, let me see. Like you said, I have a big gallery view here of two pages and it's nice to see all these faces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I see that I can share my screen. Absolutely. All right. But then I'm going to go ahead and get this thing started. Come on. There we are. Well, as, as you can see, I'm going to be talking about how you can increase your revenue as a field inspector. Many people have asked me, is this doable in more than one state? Yes, it is. This particular presentation, we did, myself and Crystal Whiteside Lemon did an introduction to this uh, field at the NNA's conference for 2020, but of course it was virtual. So we didn't have much time. We did about a 30 minute presentation and from that presentation, I received overwhelming response from people saying, can you tell me more? And I thought we had put enough, but apparently not. <laughs> so I created a module. Uh, module one is about two hours. Today, we're not doing module one, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. No need to go through another introduction about myself because she did a great job and I thank you for introducing me. Um, so first question, do I have to be a notary public to do this? We're gonna look at both spectrums. First, if you are a notary, great, yay. Because you've been trained to pay attention to fraudulent signs and details because you are a notary and that's what we centrally do. We're here to protect the public and prevent them from being involved or snared into fraud as a notary. Secondly, if you are a notary and a notary signing agent, I'm sure you have become comfortable. Keep looking back at me. I suggest you do whatever you need to Ms. do. Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown. Okay, I got you. Okay. So I would, I would think that you have become comfortable in dealing with people professionally and intimately. So that makes it a good thing for you. 
Give my headphones. Um, okay, Miss Jamie, hold on one second. Okay, I need to mute everyone, which is going to mute you. So just one moment. Okay. Oh, I think, okay, I think we're good to go. Okay. And going back to the last, uh, the last sentence on this side saying, if you are a notary, some companies will use you for completing notary tasks. That surprised me because I signed up with companies to do field inspection work. And then I began to get calls for notary work. So that's the A plus right there. If you are not a notary, no, you do not need to be a notary to become a inspector. So that's a great thing. It's not a requirement, but you might become inspired to become a notary um, from doing field inspections. So before I move forward, let me give you a, a, a personal um, introduction as to why I became a field inspector. First of all, I went to the NNA's conference, and of course, you know, we're going to these national notary conferences to network, to learn a way to improve our business, to expand it, diversify it, to get ideas from other people, and just to become better at what we do. I went to the conference. This was, it had to be over 16 years ago. And I went to this presentation about being a field inspector. Of course, it sounds new and I'm already, I'm always open to hear something new. So I was sitting there and it, it sounded pretty interesting. However, I went back to work. At that time, I lived in California. That's where I was born and raised. I went back and kept doing my notary signing agent business, teaching notary law, mentoring. My hands were full. I didn't do anything with field inspection, but I did store it in the back of my mind. I didn't forget about it. Years later, I moved here to Louisiana because my parents retired and they decided to move to Louisiana where my father is from. I knew I'd be here one day. I knew that was going to happen. I'm the only girl and I have five older brothers. So I knew that was going to be, I would be here in Louisiana one day. When I moved here, I said, wow, can you believe this? I left my lovely notary business that was established, my students, my mentees. I left everything in California and had to start all over again. Here in Louisiana, it is the only civil law state. Everything is based on French Napoleonic law instead of English or England law. So I had to start all over again. And in the meantime, I will tell you this, many people know this, maybe my Texans might know because they're close and 30 minutes from Texas state line. They might know that Louisiana law is a six month class and a six hour exam. Mm. <laughs> I was like, no, after, I mean, so when I got here, I, I, I was past the time to enroll for the class. So I had to wait. So I said, man, what can I do? I started, of, of course, I was looking for work. What I thought was interesting is that I saw jobs here entitled notarial secretary. So I'm like, well, when I get my notary law, I'm going to apply for that so I could just see what it's all about. But in the meantime, I have to learn this place, network, know where I'm going, meet people. And so I pulled back into the back part of my brain and got that field inspection work. And I didn't know anything. I just went through the book and I just started applying uh, with companies. So that tells you something right then and there. I didn't have any experience. I applied for it. Then I started getting calls and people would start sending me paperwork and contracts to complete I took my time. I read through the contracts. I read through their in instructions. It seemed like I can do it. I got calls to go and inspect equipment, 
commercial businesses, homes, cars, put locks on doors. I mean, you name it. I got all kinds of calls. So I began to do it. So that is going to be the brief part of how I was introduced into this business. When I do the two hour or two and a half hour webinar, I, 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 I take you on the journey as I'm going through the webinar. So you'll learn more as I go. But I did want to tell you how I got introduced. It helped me learn my area. It helped me meet people. It made me feel comfortable in my community. And it was fun. And I got paid. And it worked. So I think it's viable. So next question is, what is a field inspector? Well, it is, you are a service representative that generally are an independent contractor. There are some companies that will hire you to work for them part-time and full-time, but for the most part, you are an independent contractor. You act directly for banks, finance companies, um, and insurance companies to contact their consumers and collect information on properties, as I mentioned, and collateral like equipment, cars, and so motorcycles and so forth. The segments that you're dealing with are, again, residential mortgage, industry, insurance, commercial, property preservation. That's a whole nother module that I haven't even developed yet. But because I've had an overwhelming request to develop it, that will be module three is property preservation by itself. Then of course, notary task. I've been called to go and inspect certain um, equipment. And at the same time, they want me to notarize the documents, the vehicle title documents for a piece of equipment. So being a notary goes hand in hand in, in most cases with being a field in inspector. Now, let me move this thing. There we are. Why should you start this business? This, of course, I had to concise um, everything in this introduction, but these, this is the notes, nuts and bolts of why you should join or become a field inspector because there's no special education or experience required. You can be your own boss, have your flexible hours, and you all know that as an independent contractor, you can say yes or you can say no. Now, I'm going to be integrating sign language because I'm a sign language interpreter, and I can't help but use my hands, so excuse me for that. But being your own boss is a good thing because if you're overwhelmed, you can decline work, but I will always caution you not to overwhelm yourself with signing up with too many companies until you feel comfortable that you can handle all of the work because too, too much turning down work uh, will tell the company they need to find someone else. So you always want to balance it. Um, there are no federal, state, or local licensing requirements for just about 95% of the inspections. You can uh, There's a fast start and low startup costs. Now, when I did this presentation for the NNA this year, I would go back to the uh, site and I would read comments that people would post because I wanna know how you all feel. There was one lady that posted a comment. She thanked us for doing the presentation. She also said, I signed up with one company and I'm already doing work. So it is doable. You can start fast and you do not need a lot to start up. There are no business, there is no business insurance required for a large part of the um, inspections. However, I will tell you with property preservation, it is a requirement to have insurance and it's like liability insurance. You don't have to quit your current job. You can uh, balance it. Now, back to one of my personal little experiences. Once I passed a notary exam um, and took the test and so forth and became a notary, of course, I always wanted to be a notary. So that was a, uh, a given that I was going to become a notary here. 
I also took a job at Southern University. And I had two companies that I was working for doing field inspections. This one company, I'm still with them. I would go to my portal and I'd see 10 or 15 jobs. I'm like, oh boy. So I would do some on my lunch break. I would always map which jobs were close to me. And sometimes I would do two or three on my lunch break, do the actual field work and then come back later in the evening at home and do the reports. And then uh, sometimes I would do some after work. So maybe I could complete, just depending on how I felt, uh, four or five jobs for the day. And it didn't take long to do the reports. So I would be done with that. And then I would feel like, okay, great. Five done, I have maybe five more. I do those next five jobs within two days and I think I'm gonna take a breath. Then I go back, I get my, my text start ding, 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 ping, and I'm like, 10 more jobs. Huh. The work came, would come in and I was able to do it during lunch, after work, on the weekends. And I'm still with that company, but of course, um, I don't do as much with that particular company because I had to balance the scale. I do signings, I do notary, you know, general notary work, vehicle title, notarizations. So it's busy. Okay, you can also subcontract your work. That's where you get smart. So what I did was, my husband's not a notary. So several companies allowed me to subcontract the work out. So I trained my husband, put him under my account. And if I can't do it, I give it to him. I love it. Inspections are always in demand. So that would work for any of you that would want to give work to your husband, give work to a partner of yours, give work to a daughter or son, whoever, to keep the money coming in, into your home. You can do that. So those are great benefits. Now, the way that I put this in the introduction is different from the regular webinar because I go into more detail, but this is enough to tell you what you are as a field inspector. Right in the middle, you see your eyes and ears for a company. You go out to the field to see what they can't see because they're not there and to hear what they cannot hear, meaning information given to you from the consumer. So starting in the top middle, you are a report writer. You do not have to have major skills like a news report writer or something like that. You just ha have to know how to uh, type information, many or, 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 in, or input information. Many of us have had clerical jobs, administrative jobs, and so forth. And so just putting information simply in a report or in a section based on what you saw and heard can come easy. Of course, as I stated, you're an independent contractor. You're a photographer, not a professional one, but you use your handy dandy cell phone and take pictures or your tablet a data collector, meaning you're gathering information. It's not overwhelming, but you do do that. You can also call yourself an interviewer because in some cases you are asking questions, you're getting the answer and you're jotting that down. And an investigator. That's a good way to summarize all of this is saying you are an investigator or an inspector. So that's what you actually do as a field inspector. So I'm pretty sure you might say, what is the training? What do I need to do? This gives you the basics. Hiring firms or companies that you work for, they have their own self-made instructions. That's the reason why I didn't feel overwhelmed because they basically taught me. They do in-house training. They have their own resources. They have tutorial videos. And then of course you have me as a ready-made mentor 
for your business. And I will mentor you along with, um, I know that Liz does mentoring. I do mentoring and uh, not just for notary, but for this field inspection um, business. And we and I do it one on one. And of course, if there is any way that Liz wants me to work with her, I'll work with her. And and, I, and I'm sure she will work with me because our goal is to let you succeed. The companies want you to succeed because they want you to do the work and get it done and do it timely. And of course, I do too because I feel I would feel bad training you or doing a webinar and nobody or uh, get their business off the ground. I want that to happen. So next is how can I market myself if I have no experience? This is the quick synopsis way is you might have a business resume and you might have a professional resume that has your notary work, notary signing agent, you can have a field inspection resume and it could be one page and that one page should be pleasing to the eye with soothing colors and graphics, not overwhelming. And you basically are going to list the types of inspections you perform. It doesn't mean that you have already performed them, but you can list the perfection inspections that you want to perform. And you will learn that in the webinar. So in your, in your resume, you indicate who you are, your background, any credentials you have, any certifications. If you're a notary, of course, you want to list that. Why you are fit for the job. You will learn about the skills, the hard skills and the soft skills that you need for this industry. What you do, again, the inspections I will indicate to you what would be the best way, the best type of inspections to start with or do. And of course, where you do it. How many of you, I know you're muted, but how many of you have ever received a business card from someone and they have everything on there, but they don't indicate what area they service? They may have a, a phone number with an area code. If you're in that state, you say, okay, I know, 727-424-562, you know, I know these area codes. But if you don't, you're like, okay, I got this information, but I don't know where this person, what area they service. Well, that this is something you don't want to forget in your one-page resume. This one-page resume can easily go over to a one-page website, a free website, and this could be all about field inspections or a one page that you integrate into your current website. So this is how you can essentially get started with no experience. I had none, as I told you earlier, and they started calling me for work and it just took time. I've, I eventually felt comfortable. It didn't take that long with certain types of inspections to feel comfortable and get them done. So here we are. I said I was going to tell you in the webinar, but I am still giving you some inspections in this introduction. You have delinquencies. Those are really easy. Um, obviously, if a person is delinquent, they're behind in a bill payment of some sort. Equipment inspections, cars, um, ride mowers, boats, motorcycles, um, occupancy inspections. You're basically trying to see if someone is there. Um, and all of these other types of inspections, foreclosure, commercial inspections, quality control, property condition, drive-by inspections. And I know you see up here, there are over a hundred different types of inspections. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just eight. And you can, um, some, some people have backgrounds that I don't know anything about. So what if you have a background and in the, in the um, webinar that I do for two and a half hours, you go through all those inspections and you see something that 
uh, inspires you or that matches your background, you can go ahead and you can do searches to find inspections specifically of that type. So there are there is work to be received in this industry. Um, okay, now, as far as how to get started, I have two modules that are already created and it equals up to a combined total of five hours. The first one, if you're interested in taking these modules, I like to give you a special offer just because you have attended this introduction that's been sponsored by Ms. Head. The special code is here and the fee is 125 for both. Now, initially when I started, I charged $50. And can you believe it? People who actually took the webinar, they reprimanded me. They told me, you are not charging enough. And I'm like, okay. Now, the, you guys are my students or my mentees, and you're telling me to charge more. One lady told me, she said, I feel like I'm ripping you off <laughs> because I didn't charge enough. So what I did was for the five hours, I've combined two modules so that I feel I don't want to rip anyone off. And I want to make sure that you have enough or more than enough information. So in module one, I'm going to go more into detail about what the field service industry is, um, more information on why you should start your business, because I didn't list everything. Um, the demands of field in inspection, the requirements, tools of the trade, duties. I'm going to break down the most common inspection types. I'm going to be breaking it down so that you'll be able to see what it is. I'm going to go over the in inspection um, re reports. So I'm going to pull up sample reports. I'll be going to different websites so that you can and logging in so that you can see how I log in, see some of the reports, see some of the tutorial videos, see the company's websites, how they advertise, see an actual contract. I'm gonna discuss do's and don'ts, educational and networking resources. I'm gonna give you those. Uh, we, we definitely are gonna discuss the earning potential and the business startup costs, how to create your field inspection portfolio. I'll give you a sample resume. Um, and the bottom line, how to find work. I am not trying to handicap you by just giving you a list. I'm gonna tell you how to find more work yourself. Um, I'll also give you a 14 page ebook on how to design your inspection resume for marketing. I'm gonna give you the electronic manual, the FDP, um, FDPCA, Fair Debt Practices a Collection Act, and um, a website link where you can get a free inspection membership and a logo. And I'm gonna give you um, a list of hiring firms. So as they say, give a person a fish or teach them how to fish. I wanna teach you how to fish. And I'm also going to give you a referral directly to an agency that I work for. I, I did that with my previous three classes and many people started getting work. And by giving you the list of hiring firms, say for example, I may have signed up with a company and they hadn't given me any work because they didn't have a lot of volume. So I sign up with another company, they give me work. So I always say between one to three companies just to start off with, you might end up getting more. Um, so that's what I discussed in module one, outside of the cost. And I'm gonna give you, I know some people are saying, how much, how much? I am not gonna leave today without giving you some idea of the earning potential because I would just be wrong <laughs> to do. Module two 
is the business entity enhancement module. I'm gonna be doing module one live with this special code. Then I'll do module two will be sent to you thereafter. Um, after we do module one. But I'll discuss how to set up your business entity. Many of you already know these things, but some don't. So I'll discuss that. I'll discuss um, getting your business banking account established, which helps you get business credit, getting your EIN number, getting an easy to maintain website. I'll uh, cross, you know, reference two or three sites your business cards, and a professional business badge. I'm going to refer you as to where to get one of those. Um, I don't have mine with me, but I have a badge that um, actually someone gave me as a gift. And it, it has that um, bar stamp on it. Uh -oh. So I'm going to discuss the badge, and then I'm going to go over the, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven U.S. code sections that I want you to be familiar with. So I'll pick out the specifics that would be good for you. So someone may say, well, I'm not a debt collector, but you are a representative of a debt collection agency thereof. And so you should know some of the collection practices that the debt, the, um, debt collector should have, the debtor, and then you as the representative. So I'll break all of that down in module two. And finally, I'm going to discuss in module two how you can use field inspection. Uh -oh. Keep going, I'll find them. Okay. You can use field inspection to bridge becoming a private investigator. And I became a private investigator. I became licensed. And all of my experience that I used came from this field industry segment. And so it worked. And so it also is allowing me now to elevate myself to higher types of inspections. And if someone wanted to become, um, uh, I just went blank, um, a background investigator. That's the kind of work I'm talking about. Hold on. Can we all put ourselves on mute? We have quite a few people on here, so it, it takes me a little bit to go and try and find the person that's not muted. We will have questions at the end, but I really need y'all to mute yourselves. Let's be respectful and allow Jamie the respect. Let's be let's make sure we are being respectful of this presenter. So please mute yourselves or remove yourself from this Zoom. Trevon McDaniel, mute yourself, please. iPhone, mute yourself, please. Christian, mute yourself, please. Oh, okay. Good to go. If it happens again, I'll just put them in the weight room and they can watch the replay. Because I okay. it takes me too long to go through 80 people. Oh, we got a lot of names, yeah. Yeah. Understand, understand people. If you do not mute yourself, you will go into the weight room and you will be able to watch the recording afterwards. But there's too many people on and we appreciate you being here to listen, because Jamie's got some really good information, but it is very distracting if you do not put yourselves on mute. We're unable to mute all of you at the same time. So we're asking you to please be respectful or remove yourself, please. Thank you so much. Jamie, I am so sorry. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll just go over, um, the last one, because I, well, the last two, I was saying that I'm going to go into detail about for about uh, 
seven different U.S. Code sections on the FDCPA um, Practices Act, and I'm going to discuss how you can use field inspection to bridge to becoming a private investigator. My husband is a background investigator, and he was able to, um, doing this, he was able to use this as experience because as an inspector, he could say that he did certain things. So this is a good industry to bridge or parlay over into doing other things if you want it to, or if you are retired and you say, I don't want to do no more than this, then this is all you do. Fine with me, as long as it works for your schedule. The other thing uh, that I want to say is that the fees I've seen people want to offer $10 for an inspection. I don't do anything under 20. I'm not doing 10. I'm not doing 15. I do nothing under 20. Now, that may not sound like a lot initially starting off, but let me tell you this. Remember I, I told you that I did a couple of jobs on my lunch break? Uh, two or three maybe, and then two or three by the end of the day or after work. Well, this company sent me and they said, 10 or 15, I said, and I told them no. I said, instead of it being 10, it went to 20. Instead of it being 15, it went to 30. And that's what I said I'm going to do. And they said, okay, they took it. So sometimes you can negotiate for a little bit more because that just I, that just wasn't worth it for me. So all I was doing was doing a drive-by. I go into the portal, print out a single letter, fold that letter up, put it in an envelope of a the envelope they sent me in the mail that had confidential on the you know on the um, envelope. Put it in there, put some tape on it, had the report, I mean, or the um, job assignment with the information, map quested, drove over there, put the letter in the door. And that's why I say you become a photographer and um, an investigator because you learn how to use your phone. I tell you, I can use my phone. And what I really like on my phone, I forgot, what do you call these things, um, Liz? You asking Liz? <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, pop sockets. <laughs> Ask Tanika. She got it. Pop, pop socket. I, I like this because I can hold my phone a certain way and I just snap my pictures and I would never be out there. Hmm. Uh uh. You don't want to be too obvious, mm -hmm. but there's ways that I've learned to pull up or not right in front of the, the home. I take my pictures. So it took me really, say, maybe 15 minutes to get to the address, five minutes to do the job, and they, and they paid me 20 or $30. So for that day on my lunch, I did three. And I was successful with um, the requirements that they would pay for the $30. So $90 on lunch. And then after work, I did another three. And that was another $90. But, uh-oh, now that. Okay, we're going to mute you now. You <laughs> mute me. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought That's I was muted. Just kidding, baby. Just kidding. <laughs> so that was $180 that I made for the day for six jobs. So for, and, and that was one company. There are some other companies that pay 75, 50, 100, 125. It just depends on what type of work you are doing. There's one company, they keep paying me $100 to drive out to this one location. And I've driven there over 10 times. Make that know. money. <laughs> I just keep going. <laughs> I just keep going. But I figured out the last time I went, you know, I always try to go and see if there's something new that I see at this business. So it didn't look like anybody was there, but always a trailer in the back. 
and I, I would, I could go. Now this one, I could be so cool and nonchalant about. I go, I drive, I get out, I take pictures, I walk up to the, you know, the windows of tenant. I can take my phone and go in and, and I get good pictures. Well, this time I saw something different. And I took pictures of that. There was someone sitting in the trailer that didn't even come out to bother me. And I took certain pictures and I think I figured out what it was. The company was looking to see if this if these people were using this area as a dumping mm. uh, zone for something because the company had their uh, sign, but right next door, the same sign was there for a viable business. And I don't know, whatever, maybe the extra information that I gave them, it was supposed to be a hundred dollars. When I got the check, it said 150. So I thanked them for that. I didn't make a stink or a fuss about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure they know what they were doing because all previously they all they always paid me the hundred dollars. Mm. But that was um, another company that I do work for. No, I, I don't make any big issues about it. But I make sure that I do my work. Submit it on time is very important. So this is what you get with module one, module two, and of course. I've done this live presentation and I say two and a half hours and sometimes it ends up being three. People can get off, get on, I, I record it. You can see it in the waiting room or whatever, but I want to make sure that when you're done, I mean, when I'm done, you're fine. So I do want to thank you for your time. Here is my uh, email address. Oh, I didn't put the phone number, so I'm going to put it in the chat room. Um, but I also want to tell you that I have some, uh, I, I, I definitely want you to email me and give me your comments about this webinar, any future webinar ideas you might have, anything that you want to know about. I'll be happy to work with Miss. Liz on anything. And of course, I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to give you two dates. If anyone is interested in taking the detailed, you know, webinar, by the time that we end this, I'm going to give you two other dates. You can just email me and tell me which one works for you. But I do want to tell you, finally, I have two books. And these books are, um, this one on top, this is my mantra. Notarize this is what I say to anything that I want to overcome. I just notarize it. I don't have time to play. That is my mantra. So I have 10 ways to say notarize this when life happens. And this is, this book was inspired on the 2018 presentation that I gave at, at the NNA's conference. It is my journey of how I established a thriving business. And then I reestablished it in another state, as well as how I diversified my business with more than just field inspection. The book is $20. And then the second book is What's in your notary toolbox? This is really for people who are beginning to intermediate new notaries that you know want to know about tools that are needed to start their business. The best way to order it, because right now it is in-house, because I'm doing my final proofing of it for it to be on Amazon, but right now it's, it's in-house. So if you wanted to order it, you would just email me. And, uh-oh, that's it. That is the end of our present, of my presentation. Um, Thank I you put, so much. I'm sorry, go I, ahead. I just was saying that I put my, my phone number, then you have my, my email, and then that's it. All right. We have about 15 minutes. Um, do you mind taking some questions? If we have any, I'm sure we have some questions. Oh, not at all. I'm all ready. All right. So um, 
this is going to be tricky because we have a lot of people. <laughs> so I'm going to, we're going to try just to unmute. So I guess it's first come, first serve. Go. <laughs> no questions? Okay, so we have it in the chat. Okay, Ms. Jamie, I'm a, I am already a field inspector. But I want to I want to get more into the field of field inspection uh, and do more out there in the field. So this information was real good. That's why I said I want to contact you later okay. um, to 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 look and see how I can expand the area that I'm already in. Okay. Well, say for example, in your case, if you don't want the presentation, you can do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me, because that's what I do. And I, I, I do it at $25 an hour. And so what I, I, I like to do first is do a consultation with you so I know what you need. So I'm not using your hour, just talking about what you need. I wanna use the full hour on giving you the information based on our consultation. So right. we can do that as well. Yeah, because that, that 125 class looks nice and I, I'm, I'm still sure considering the 125 class. It's up to you. We can do one point. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't do anything etched in stone. So, mm -hmm. but if somebody wants the 125, they can do that. If they just want the module one, we can do that too. And then you would just email me directly and then I'll know, um, you know, how to set you up. Okay. When I have your information, I'll be in contact because we I really want to get it. I really want to expand this service on there. Sounds good. And I'm always good to network. So like I said, I'm going to give everyone in the presentation, I give you a list of a bunch of companies. So you'll have something to work with. And then I'm going to show you how to get started. Okay, I'll be quiet. Next question. Okay, we have a few in the chat and someone gave me a great idea. So if you have questions after this, raise your hand, we'll call on you. Um, if you don't wanna speak, that's fine. You can still put your questions in the chat, but this is interactive. Y'all can take your, mic your mics off and just you know go for it. After I'm done with the questions in the chat, Tia, I see your hand. Okay, so the first one is, uh, does notary insurance cover the field inspection? I saw that, no, it doesn't. Um, building inspection, you don't need insurance for that. You would, if you wanted to get insurance, that would be um, purely just for your business, like liability insurance, if you wanted that, but it's not needed for just basic field inspections. Okay. Um, we had a few people asking about the Facebook group and the YouTube channel. I'll put that links on there shortly. Um, someone says, spoke on fees for each of these tasks. What is the, What are the fees like? Mm, okay. I do want to say right before I go to this one, for the insurance, a, a good company for business liability is Hartford Insurance. You can try the Hartford Insurance Company. That's just one referral. As far as fees, Minimally starting at $20, going up to 30, 45, 50, 75, 100 and plus. It depends on what type of inspection you are doing. I recommend don't do nothing under $20. Mm. And of course, you know, for any inspection you do, you count your miles. So you're gonna be using the business mileage for that, just like you do with your notary work. You can write that off as well. And any tools or supplies, I talk on that in the webinar. Is there field inspection work in every state? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, every, every state has people who are delinquent or behind in their bills. Um, and every state has businesses, commercial industries that need to be inspected, foreclosed homes, this is a net, a nationwide business, just like the notary public role. Mm. Oh, you want me to go ahead, Tamika, and just go down the questions? Yeah, go ahead. And then we have Tia and Ashley with their hand rolls. So after you get those. Okay. Okay. A certification or license is not required. 
um, there are some simple startup costs, but that has to do with supplies, like making sure you have a phone, pins, a measuring tape if you're going to do auto inspections. These are just simple startup costs, a clipboard, things like that that I go over, but no major expensive startup costs. Um, and, I, and I just went over the, the fees. Um, and then that's the last question that I see. Um, is there a cert certification required? No certification, no license. Okay, Tia, you had a question? <laughs> yes, my question just has to do, just curious about safety. Have you ever accepted an inspection and then you got there and didn't feel safe about the, the environment and canceled it or anything to that, of that nature? Good question. Um, I have. I've gone to, I could probably count them on one hand. In the, I've been here in Louisiana 14 years. And I told them I'm not going. So you don't put yourself at risk, meaning some dogs. It's like this one dog just roaming the neighborhood. I'm not getting out to go put any letter in a door with this pit bull roaming the neighborhood. So that didn't happen. Another time I went to a neighborhood and someone came out to me and told me he didn't want me in his neighborhood. Mm. So I pulled up, I left. I, I told him, you shouldn't be scared of me. I'm scared of you. So I just put on around the corner and I called the police just to let them know that this man harassed me and where my location was and then I left and then I called the company immediately and told them what the situation was. Um, didn't stop my work. If they're a good company, then they should have some kind of compassion. But <clears throat> nonetheless, I still was able to get work and I'm still working for the same company. And if it's too dark, then sometimes you start driving out to rural uh, um, back in the country areas and I, I'm not going to do it if it's not if it doesn't start to look if it starts to look unsafe then I need to go thank yeah. you you're welcome Ashley um, my question is um, how do you judge because I, I signed up with a station company and they were only like offering um i didn't see any 20 dollar ones so and then after a while i didn't take any and they kind of they you know disabled my account so how do you how long do you wait it out with a company if it's under if it's not worth it do you just you know after a while you just delete the app or be removed like how do you judge it i will <laughs> let me make sure that i understand they offered you work or they didn't Say that again. They they offered me work, but it was it was a lot, like maybe seven, eight dollars. The highest one I seen was maybe 13, and it was like 40 minutes away. It wasn't like in my area. So after a while, I wasn't taking any jobs because it wasn't, you know, worth the money. And they um, you know, removed me off the platform. So gotcha. how long do you like test it out? Like if you're not getting anything 20 or more. Do you just take removing? I would not. Okay. I would remove the app from my phone because that's wasted storage that I don't need. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it seems like my phone is always talking about no storage. So I remove the app, but I would not, if I wouldn't do anything, initiate anything. If they initiate it, fine. I just move on. And I'm going to tell you why. There was a company that I signed up with and I had not received not one field inspection job, not one. But guess what? COVID-19 hit and this company called me and they are giving me loan signing or signing jobs, 200 plus mm. a job. I signed up with them for field inspections. So that's why I say, don't do nothing other than remove the app so that you're not, you know, just having dead space 
storage and just file, put the file away. For every company that I work with, I create a file. I have my contract and everything in the file and I just file it away in my file cabinet. Um, if it's if if the money isn't what you want, don't do it. I, I wouldn't do 13-7. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. But I would just file it away because you never know what might happen later. They may end up getting uh, not like a, a contract and they need you. Mm -hmm. And it may pay more. So I say just hold off, file it away and remove the app and move on. If you want to periodically contact them and say, I'm still here, then that's fine too. Send them a nice little um, courtesy email and, and move on. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Um, what type of field inspection work is needed for delinquencies? What type of field? A delinquencies is the field inspection, is the type of, is a, is a type of inspection. So what kind of work, did I understand that? Uh, that's that's the question, so yeah. I, I guess maybe like repose, stuff like that. Okay, repose is different than delinquencies. So in the webinar, I explained what a delinquencies are, auto inspections, okay. but you know, delinquency is really someone's behind in their payment for a car, for their mortgage or whatever it is. And you are following the instructions of the company to get the information to them, to the person that's behind. Okay. Um, what, type of, what type of environments do you go in as an inspector? Public, private? Um, public. Wait a minute, what was the question? What type of environments do you go in as an inspector? Oh, okay. Um, homes, like I said, I'm, you know, if someone is delinquent, I'm, I'm going to their home. Okay. I'm not going inside of the home, I'm just going to the home and delivering the letter. Um, so it's different than a notary. Notaries, we're sometimes going into the homes, meeting people at their work. Um, commercial or business in inspections, vacancies, occupancy inspections, you're going to commercial places. I've gone to CVS, uh, Rite Aid, um, nail salons, hair salons, um, any type of, of business that they want me to check and see if they're occupied or <clears throat> if this company got a new merchant processing account and they want to see if it's a viable business. So there's a variety of businesses. I have also gone to homes that are being reconstructed and the company wants me to check the work. They give me a list and say, go see if this has been done. So... Those are the type of businesses. Okay. Um, your answer, she's answering some of them, you guys. So uh, you can just check the chat. Um, how long is the webinar for module one? Two and is there, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 2.5 hours, two and a half hours or so. No background check is needed. <clears throat> if, if you're not getting the license or being certified, they don't want a background check unless it's going to be a certain type of inspection. Each company has their own requirements, but generally speaking, no background. If you are a notary, you would have already gone through the background check. So being a notary helps. If you are a notary signing agent and you have done the NNA's background, you already have one. You can give it to them. You don't have to pay. And in most cases, if they do a background, they do not expect you to pay anyway. But I have not gone through any background checks with, I've signed up with about 10 to 15 companies. Jamie, there's a question. I think she meant to, to go to everyone, but I had 
done a private message <laughs> to Ruby Walker. And she said, is there a checklist per assignment that the company wants the inspector to complete? Um, they will give you an assignment uh, report. They give you an assignment order and then they sometimes give you a report form, which is blank. And you print that out and you have that as your guideline to know what information they want. So you have a blank report form and also sometimes you have a checklist. So that would be a yes. <clears throat> and they also do training as I indicated. And um, uh, to tutorials and training and all of these things. They're not going to send you out there without training you. Okay. Uh, Terry, when going to someone's home, are you required to hand deliver the letter before the job is considered complete or can you leave it at the door or inside the mailbox? Nothing goes in the U.S. mailbox. That's illegal. <clears throat> Each company will give you an instructions with what they want you to do. Some will tell you um, the door uh, to the gate. They give you the in instructions. So if I just say yes for all of the companies, that would be unfair. Mm -hmm. Each company has, there, there are going to be some commonalities and there'll be some minor differences, just like it is as a notary. You know, when you're doing a, a signing, there are commonalities, but then maybe you get a package from Quicken, you get a package from Chase, Wells Fargo, Freedom Mortgage, there are commonalities, but may, you know, mostly, but then there's some minor differences. So it's going to be the same with this. Awesome. Uh -huh. So we're sitting at 803. Um, I'm, I'm willing to take one more question before we uh, end the webinar. This was great, Jamie. So much information in a small amount of time. This was awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. She's giving uh, her email information. And then I um, sent the phone number, but I'll do it again. Okay. That's my cell. And... If anyone is in Shreveport, <laughs> I end up getting um, another number. So those are the, my, t my, t oh, I told you the dates. Oh, I better not do this. Um, you can take it back. We okay. You can take it back. <laughs> I know that we're getting close to the end of the year and people are doing uh, things, they're shopping or whatever else you got going on in your life. Um, I don't know if um, December is a good month, uh, but <laughs> December 4th, or I'm going to give you guys some, uh, the 4th or the 15th, I mean 14th. And it will generally be around uh, six o'clock, six or 6.30 to get started. But what I'd like for you to do is email me and I'm gonna go with the majority. If I have a good amount of people that want to do it on the fourth, we'll do it on the fourth. Good amount on the 14th, I'll do it on the 14th. What if you have a good amount on the fourth and a good amount on the 14th? Will you do it twice? I'll do it twice. All right. You're saying 6.30 p.m. or a.m.? Ooh, 6.30 p.m. Okay. I'm not a morning person, so nobody's going to call me at 6.30 a.m. Or if everybody feels that 7, well, no, 7 o'clock is really late. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for this two and a half. Mm -hmm. So 6 is a good time from 6 to 8. And then I, I give time for questions, which... Generally, um, it's like 30 minutes because people have questions. And if I see the question, I say, hold on tight because the question is going to be answered. Right. So there's an, an order, you know. 
Okay. Now, Kristen, you put the 14th, please, in the chat. But I think, and, and Jamie, you correct me if I'm wrong. I think what she wants you to do is to email your preference to her. Got it. And and also, I, I do the same as Liz. I will, um, after I get a consensus, I'm going to post it on eventbrite.com. And then you'll have a um, way to uh, register. And so all the emails that I get, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a mass email to everyone once it's all posted up and then you'll know. Okay, time to go register. Awesome. Okay, and so that last question uh, we're going to take for the night is uh, for this industry is paid net 30, 60. They wanna know how you get paid, Jamie. Okay, I put in there, um, I have a, a couple of companies paid bi-weekly. I have some that pay every 30 days. And so, and I have a company that pays as soon as the work is done, they pay within a week. So it's just like the notary industry. Mm -hmm. And they have um, um, direct deposit. And then um, what is that? E-check. E E-check e deluxe. They do that also. All right. Yes. Great presentation, Jamie. We yes. appreciate Thank you coming you. on and doing this. And let me tell you, you had a lot of people, girl. You had a lot of people. <laughs> and you did an excellent job. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I have to thank you and tell everyone that when I came to Texas to do a loan signing presentation, I, that's where I met you. So I will tell you, Liz is a great person because she is knowledgeable, but she's also humble because a humble person knows they don't know it all. And that's how I feel. I can learn from everybody. I'm going to be talking to Mr. J. Prince as well. So he's going to educate me on some things too, because we can always learn. Once you get to the point where you think you can't be told anything, you might as well forget it mm. because the haughty person crumbles. So um, I appreciate that. And I said, you know me. And then I said, I remember you, Liz, because you were a speaker also. And I would scroll and I said, it's a new face. Let me tap into this new face. And now here I am with Miss E.C. Head. <laughs> did, you, did you catch my dance moves at the beginning? Oh, uh, we all did. Unfortunately. <laughs> all right. Um, that's a wrap. This was our- I want to be able to dance like Miss, Miss Head did, you know. Uh-oh. <laughs> I can only chair dance, though. I can only chair dance. Oh, okay. You you have the best rhythm in while you're sitting down. It goes out the window once you stand up. <laughs> so this was our last notary nugget. I think we we went out with a blast. This was our last notary nugget for the year. So we will pick back up in January. If you know someone um, that would be willing to share, please send them our way. I'm filling up the calendar now. Um, Saturday is our last class for the year as well as notary. I'm sorry, it's a workshop two and three. Um, and then we're going to take a break. So I appreciate everyone being here and I hope to see you, um, in class. If you haven't been on class, we still will be giving, you know, those video notary nuggets that Liz does all through December. So don't fret. We're not leaving you totally. All right. So, um, good night, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks again, guys. It was good seeing you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the presentation. Nice. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Question. Okay. Jonathan, my contact information, my phone number is 214-466-3065. My email is info at pretty in branding, P-R-E-T-T-Y-I-N-B-R-A-N-D-I-N-G.com. Okay, put that in the check because you know you're talking faster than I can write. Well, I'm, I was trying to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here just to do me. it all. <laughs>
Text me your info at 901-282-1280. Now, now who talking fast? Okay. 901-282-1280. Jonathan, you in Tennessee? You in Memphis? Yeah, I'm, 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 over here with, I'm over here with Elvis. You know, we party at Graceland every now and then. <laughs> Oh, see, I need his head over here so she can do the, the chair moves with, with Elvis when he, you know. Look, I, 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 I left Memphis 50, over 50 years ago. Wait a minute, you ain't, you're not that, you're not that old, Miss Head. Baby, I'm, I'm 68, almost yeah. 69. Look, you, you got people fooled in because, you know, you look, you look very young, but <laughs> hey, you got no. Because they can't move like that, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I was in Memphis. In fact, I was in Memphis in March, right before COVID. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, good evening. <laughs> We're going to try this again. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How do I get out of this? My goodness. Oh, she just hit in, Jamie. I know. Oh, I'm messing with She's talking about me. <laughs> oh, she got, she got, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'm sometimes. messing with you all tonight. <laughs> sometimes I... keeps talking after we're done. Always. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>